All right, welcome back. So now I'm going to talk about the the angles in the chart, the houses 1, 4, 7, and 10. And these are called the Kendras. And that is actually not a Sanskrit word. Like I was saying in the last video, that actually comes from the Greek Kendron. Um, it's very interesting. So that is a little sort of clue about the the cross-pollination of all these ancient cultures. We kind of, it's really weird how scholars like to think of, you know, the scholars that like Greece, they like to think everything came from Greece and everywhere else was just, um, you know, barbarians and little, little, little shacks. And then, you know, the Chinese scholars like to think the same thing about China and like to think, like to ignore all the rest. And the Indian scholars like to think that everything came from India and that everyone else was afraid of the sun and that might be partly true but then the Babylonian scholars or the Egyptian scholars then they love to think that astrology came from Egypt and that everything everyone else copied them and that's just a really petty small-minded view um, regardless of which one you like so I'm not going to get caught up in that and I would recommend that you not get caught up in that either um, and it really doesn't even matter where this stuff came from um, but Kendra the word for Angles in the chart, houses 1, 4, 7, and 10, comes from Kendron, the Greek word for those angles. Um, these angles in the chart are very important. Um, they are the angles, the points where the um, they basically replicate the first sign, fourth sign, seventh, and tenth signs. Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, where the seasons change, where the sun shifts and starts doing a new thing and so they're important axis axes and they're important angles um, when you hear people talk about in the angles of the chart this is what we're talking about the first fourth seventh and tenth now the first house is also a trine like I was talking about it's both and that's part of why it's such an important house um, because both both of these energies mix and come together at the first house, so it's a very important house. Um, the, the, the angles, these four houses, they don't deal with Dharma, like I was saying with the first, fifth, and ninth. These, though, they deal with Karma. So these are the houses of Karmas. And it's when these houses combine with the Dharma houses, you get... Um, Raj yogas or Dharma karma adipati yogas or basically yogas where someone has karma to do in the world and they have inspiration to do it and so they're going to keep doing it no matter what and that's what a Raj yoga is basically so that's a very good thing um, yeah so any planets in the first fourth seventh or tenth are there's just going to be a lot of karma with those planets in your life there is extra karma there to be worked out and those karmas of those planets will tend to work themselves out uh, in the world more so like in the public eye each of these angles can be kind of seen in, in your life more clearly than other angles um, other parts of the chart are hidden are said to be more hidden parts like the eighth house and the twelfth um, these Four are not. These are very obvious, and these are things that we see in someone when we meet them. Um, the first house is your body, what your body looks like. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you fat? Are you skinny? Are you dark skin? Are you light skin? What's your hair like? All these things, that's the first house, the self, the body. The fourth is your property, the home you live in, your address, um, your family life. And your emotions, which are not as obvious, but the rest, most of the rest of those things are very concrete, obvious things you can see in your life um, that you'll like. Your karma will have a big say on um, vehicles. That's another fourth house thing. Um, family, home, vehicles, stuff like that. Seventh house is your wife. The other important people in your life: your husband or your wife, or your important trading partners, and the public and the legacy you leave on the public. And it, in many ways, it can have to do with, like, how you project yourself uh, out into the public, too. Or the legacy that you leave, I guess, is the best way to put it. And then the 10th house has to do with 
uh, your actions and your work and your career in the world and what you do, um, how you're impacting the world. The tenth is the main house of karma. It's called the Karma Bhava. Um, so it's really the most powerful of these angles. And planets in the tenth house are going to be definitely felt in your life. They're definitely going to dominate your life and have a major influence in your life. Maybe not dominate, but very, very strongly influential um, quality the planet in the tenth house will have on everything, everything else in your life. Um, yeah, so any planets in the in these angles in these parts of the chart will immediately not show grace but show karma. A lot of they're productive planets, like there's some productive energy going into them in your life. Um, a planet in the tenth will really tend to dominate, but the other angles they'll all be really noticeable. So it's it's not just that one. So let's say Venus is in the seventh house. Then you have productive karma with a partner, a business partner, or a wife related to Venus. And hopefully that Venus is in good dignity and other things are going on well there and you have a good wife or husband. Um, let's say you have, um, let's say you have Saturn in the tenth. Then you have um, a lot of obligations and a lot of you know, responsibilities and tough things that you have to do with regards to your karma and your career in life and how you impact the world. And, there, and you might even impact the world, you might even have, uh, there might be a Saturnian quality to your career and the work that you do in life, which is to say maybe a quality that emphasizes something from the past or something very old-fashioned because Saturn rules old-fashioned things or perhaps something having to do with time, perhaps. Um, I know one chart right now off the top of my head that has Saturn in the 10th and they are an astrologer which deals with time and is one of the oldest professions on the planet. I think it is actually that along with agriculture. Well, it's that and alchemy are the oldest sciences on the planet. We can definitely be sure of that. Um, people with Saturn in the 10th house, they'll sometimes work in leather shops is another thing that that will relate to. Um, or they'll work around leather, because that's an, an old thing and a dead thing, um, which Saturn rules. Or they'll work in, um, like they'll have some, maybe some servant-like job, because Saturn can rule just servant-type jobs, like being a janitor or something. Or maybe they'll work in an ashram or a faraway place, like a monastery, or even more, be a mortician or something like that. Um, like Angelina Jolie has Saturn on the Ascendant, not the 10th, but on the Ascendant, and she actually wanted to be a funerary, a funeral director when she was younger, and she had a lot of dark stuff in life at, in her youth. Um, but her 10th has three really powerful planets there, Jupiter, Mars, and the Moon in Aries, and the Mar Mars in its own sign, Moon's a ruling planet, Jupiter's there, they're all three Raj Yoga planets, so she's a great example of someone who has a strong ninth and 10th house dharma and karma connection connected to her life. And so she worked really hard to get where she was and followed her inspirations and has had a very productive, um, powerful life as a result. Um, anything else to say about these? The first, fourth, seventh, and 10th. Um, no, that's pretty much it, but these are really, the, the, the angles and the trines are the best places for most planets. The dustanas are typically some of the worst places for planets, but then there are more particular rules that go into that as well, so that's not all there is to that. And typically, benefics do the best in trines or in angles. Malefics are better to have in angles, or in Upachayas. We'll do a video on Upachayas maybe next time. Alright, thanks y'all. Take care.